Hello and welcome to this quick and complete introduction to Adobe Fireworks uh, CS6. We will talk about all the UI, everything in the UI, I will show you everything in it. So we can start off here by going in this uh, create new fireworks document, specify the resolution. This is for example full HD resolution. And here we can either go with transparent uh, background, white or uh, a custom color. I'm just gonna go with white. And yeah, so when you enter a new document, this is how it looks, how the UI looks. To the left hand side, we, we do have the tools, the tools we can use. I will talk about them immediately now. And we uh, on the right hand side, we do have things like um, image types, PNG, JPEG, uh, GIF, etc. And here we can specify background for each uh, image type if possible and down here we do have uh, pages states and layers we will use uh, layers a lot here so this is what we will be using and here one of my favorite tab here is the styles the styles this provides a lot of different beautiful styles we can apply to the text we can apply to the images everything we will uh, talk about this in the next video of course uh, and now i'm just explaining these uh, these tabs here we, we do have colors here we you can play with your colors uh, like mix and blend as much as you want here we, we do have all the color swatches if you wish to just uh, like copy them from, from here and they are grabbed into here um, and I think the rest of these tabs do not really matter but yeah let's just uh, let's just move on now to the to the menu here we have file and we have edit uh, i like to talk about the text tab the, the the text menu sorry so the text menu it's it's a very interesting one we, we can combine a text to a path and make it like shape to that path for example here attached to path etc here we, we have modify we will be using a lot of transformation we can pivot images instantly from the right to the, the left whether it's horizontally or vertically etc so a lot of things to see here and do um, and I think that's pretty much it we won't uh, we won't talk about the menu much here actually we do have uh, sorry I forgot command and creative we will be using a lot of this too so yeah, that's pretty much it about the menu on top. And as you can see, there is a zoom here. You can specify it manually. Uh, now that's enough for uh, this menu. Now here there is uh, the menu for or the properties for this current uh, this, this current document, which as you can see it's in background white, and we can change to black if you want. Uh, and this is one of the reasons uh, why I love Adobe Fireworks. Uh, in comparison to Photoshop, it's very easy and you can change a lot of things immediately from, from here. So here we can change the resolution to whatever we want. Seven. As you can see, it immediately resizes. Very, very friendly. User friendly, you can do whatever you want. Here, it's the same. It's the same. I'm not going to talk about this right now. And here, the fit canvas. I will show you what does, what does this one do. So basically, the fit canvas if you, if you click outside, don't click here on the object, click like outside here, so, so you can see the properties. If I click Fit Canvas, it will take the shape of this uh, object, but, but if I do something like, let's say, copy paste and do something like this, and click Canvas again, you see it takes the, the edges for, for these objects. So basically that's what Canvas do. Um, let's talk about a little bit about the tools, okay? So on your left hand side, we, we do have uh, different groups of tools. So there is select, bitmap, vector, web, colors, and view. So starting with the view, actually, I'd like to start with, with the view. If you press tab, it actually changes this more like a full screen size. And we can do also control, mouse up, or wheel up to zoom in. And as you can see, there is the value of the zoom changes here as well, which you can change manually. And you can actually do a control zero to, to go back to the 100% zoom or 100% default view, I think. Uh, so now let's just press tab. 
to, to go back to the user interface, just like that. Uh, now let's go and move to the select, the select group. So in the select group, we, we do have two pointers on top. So this, this one actually has two pointers in it. In this one, this, this is a vector pointer. So let, let me explain this for further. Let's create two objects. One be it a rectangle, and the other be it a, uh, a circle. Let's make this circle more like blue. Right now we do have the circle be behind, right? But but the thing is, I would like to select the circle and grab it from be behind. I cannot do it with this uh, pointer, right? I need to click V again. Now see this uh, pointer with the box in it. That means we, we can select behind. We can select things behind. See? So now I can just grab it from behind. That's the utility of this one. And now moving on to the subselection. Subselection is a vector, uh, is a vector selection tool. So if we grab this shape from any vector point, notice that it changes shape. So that's the utility of this uh, vector tool. I call it. And here below, we, we do have the scaling tool. And the scaling tool comes with four different scaling tools. So the first one is the standard one. So the standard one, just basic scaling. That's just basic scaling. Uh, but if we move the center point to the top and do something like that, notice how uh, the scaling does not uh, affect this area here. So that's the use for uh, using the point. And uh, another type of scaling is a uh, school scaling. So this uh, school scaling is more more like moving your object or image to the sides. That's uh, the utility of this uh, scaling type. And we do have very useful distort tool. This distort tool is actually very, very useful. You can make very interesting uh, 3D looking shapes, if you want to say. So basically, th that's what it does. Um, now let's move on to uh, the bitmap. The bitmap is more specified to bitmap type images. This uh, image here is not a bitmap, it's a vector. So we need to uh, convert this to a bitmap type. And to do that, we right click it and choose flatten selection, right? But first, let me show you why we cannot apply these tools here. So if I try, notice if I try to do a marquee tool on top of it, I can't because it's a vector. So let me just convert it to flatten. And now notice, now we can use the tool to cut. Beautifully. What I did there is this, and I do Control X or do Cut. I can do Cut, or you can do Crop Selected. And do Cut. You have multiple ways of doing this. So basically, just Control X is the easiest way to proceed. Okay. And by the way, if if once you cut some something here, you cannot actually do anything, right? You know why? Be because you need to remove this effect. And to remove this effect, select the marquee tool again and click here. Now, once it's moved, now we can move our object the way we want it, right? Now let's go back to the original shape, and we do have another cut tool. Which, which is a lasso. We have a lasso tool and a polygon tool. So this polygon lasso tool is more like a vector cutting tool. So you create points and then you link and you cut. Th that's one way of doing it. And we do have a lasso tool, which is manual cutting. Very useful to separate objects from uh, an array of objects. Okay, 
that's pretty much it and we do have pencil with the pencil we can create uh, we need to change the color here yeah we can create shapes for uh, des designers people that do design or create characters can actually use the tablet to you know create shapes and yeah that's uh, the use for that one so we can just uh, remove this one here Beautiful. And we do have the eraser, very useful tool. Notice again that we cannot use the eraser on uh, on the vector. We, we cannot do do that, but we can use it here. Always rem remember to convert your vector into a flattened bitmap, so we can apply these changes. Okay. So that's how it works here. Uh, <clears throat> here, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna use the eraser and remove this here, just to show you something here. Right, beautiful. Here we do we do have the rubber stamp tool. A very 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 beautiful and useful tool. I'm not gonna go through these two here because they are not that important to go through. But this one is the most important tool here, and I will tell you why right now. For example, if you wanna fill this emptiness in the background we can just uh, click the rubber stamp tool and hold alt and click anywhere next to the this uh, emptiness and then do clicks this will be very useful tool to erase uh, objects from an image so we will be using this one to erase objects from uh, an image there will be an exercise se section with everything about this so don't worry ab about this uh, this particular one <laughs> alright here we do, we do have smudge smudge is an interesting tool to, re to remove like whiteness in the borders so if we have like pixel whiteness here we can just use the smudge to remove them or blur them actually which is uh, a nice thing to do uh, okay, so now let's move, move on to the vectors. The vectors, the vectors. We can create uh, using the pen tool, costume uh, vector shapes like that. And again, we cannot do operation bitmap operation on this one unless we do flatten. Okay, Re remember. And here we can create lines. I'm not sure what this one keeps going white. We can create lines, right, and link them. If you want some some uh, uh, shapes that, that are hard, straight, or busy, this is the, the way to do it. Uh, yeah, and then we do have the objects here. This is actually one of the great tools. You can use these objects to do a lot of beautiful things like creating masks creating uh, specific borders it's a lot of things here a lot of things to do so a lot of shapes we can customize the color of these shapes we can give them different uh, textures we can increase the border we can change how the border look it's very interesting very very interesting things to, to do with these uh, objects here and finally we do have we do have the text so the text hello the the text just basically click it and type in and then go here into the fonts and choose the font you wish uh, okay just go yeah, let's stay with this one it's beautiful can give it a color and then again we, we cannot apply any operation on the text because it's vector so we always need to convert this to path and then to flatten now we can do operations on, on them all right okay i think that's pretty much it i'm not gonna talk about web because this is more like uh, 
not used anymore, so I'm not going to talk about this section here. So that's it for the UI, and see you in the next video.